So I'm going to read the three verses, 11 to 13 again. King Prithu was born of the dead body of King Vena, as fire is produced from Arani wood. Thus King Prithu will always remain just like fire, and his enemies will not be able to approach him. Indeed, he will be unbearable to his enemies, for although staying very near him, they will never be able to approach him, but will have to remain as if far away. No one will be able to overcome the strength of King Prithu. King Prithu will be able to see all the internal and external activities of every one of his citizens. Still, no one will be able to know his system of espionage and he himself will remain neutral regarding all matters of glorification or vilification paid to him. He will be exactly like air, the life force within the body, which is exhibited internally and externally, but is always neutral to all affairs. Since this king will always remain on the path of piety, he will be neutral to both his son and the son of his enemy. If the son of his enemy is not punishable, he will not punish him. But if his own son is punishable, he will immediately punish him. So the wonderful qualities and characteristics of King Pritu are here given to us to some extent. We know that King Pritu is considered a Shakti Avesha avatar. Uh, means a living entity, a jiva, soul, um, empowered by the Shakti uh, of Vishnu. And it is compared like as if iron um, is being would be put into fire, it gradually um, takes over the qualities of fire and becomes thus fiery and could be considered fire. So if a living entity is endowed with the Shaktis of the Lord, he is also be uh, considered to some degree like the Lord, because the Shaktis of the Lord reside in him or manifest in him. So what we, uh, one quality in particular I find um, comes out of these verses and this is that he is neutral he is explained of being uh, as being neutral in regards to not being affected by whether he's being glorified or whether he's being vilified he's neutral in terms of being um, not partial to neither um, enemies um, nor um, that he uh, that he is to his own family members in a way partial or like that he is um, I don't know what it's now in English, the word in German you have befangen. Um, that means that, that you're emotionally not exactly not neutral. For example, if, if, if you would be a lawyer and some of your family members would have an issue which has to be brought to court, you could not be the lawyer for them um, because you would be then befangen. I don't know not the English word. Biased. Yeah, kind of biased. I guess that would be uh, probably some term this direction. So it said King Preacher was free from from this um, from this um, error. He was able to be completely detached. So neutrality means naturally also detachment. Um, whereas as, as, as soon as there is strong attachment or identification with let's say a role or like family member or a nation and whatever naturally there's n not really a possibility for being neutral there is some some capacity i mean everyone cons um, usually switzerland is being ironically remarked always as being neutral or trying to be neutral but neutrality in that sense is not really possible uh, one can kind of try to stay out of politics perhaps but yeah not in this essential sense as here it is said because what is King Prithu doing? He's coming or like he sees things from the transcendental platform. And as we hear from um, the Bhagavad Gita where Krishna explains in 1854, like this Brahma Buddha state, the platform of Brahman from where one sees all living entities with spiritual eyes because one sees one's own self spiritually. Samasarveshu um, Bhuteshu. All living entities are being viewed um, in an equal manner. Shama is also the quality of a Brahmana. He sees, or like the Pandita Samadarshinaha, the one who sees all living entities as eternal um, souls distinguished from the body, which is, which is like naturally, um, how to say, full of variety and differences, and there's duality. So 
if you don't have the view or vision of transcendence, naturally we will be affected by the external body, by the mentality, the statues person has. And it, it's quite an endeavor to stay neutral because one might have preferences, one have likes, dislikes, um, bias, uh, so to speak, all these things are there. But King Pritu um, could p not possibly be affected like that because being on the transcendental platform. And he also declares, Krishna declares in the Bhagavad Gita in the, um, in the verse 5, I think 29 it is, or is it 19, the peace formula, Bhaktaram Yakitapasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram Sturidam Sarva Bhutanam Surit means a friend and also again Sarva, all Bhutanam are living entities, that he is the um, well-wishing friend of all living entities. So he's not only friends with um, the devotees, he's also actually friends with the non-devotees, with the demons, because he doesn't see them exactly as like demigods or demons or devotees in, a, in an external sense. Of course, as souls, as Jiva souls, we are by nature devotees of the Lord. And as also said, he's not affected by prayers and also not affected um, by blasphemy. This is um, being addressed by Narada Muni um, in the seventh canto, when Maharaj Yudhishthir inquires about how come that Sri Shupal got um, liberation from Krishna, although he was a great demon apparently, being very inimical toward Krishna. And then Narada Muni starts to explain how Vishnu, being on the transcendental platform, is not looking at the living entities in, in regards to the physical manifestations. Um, but he is seeing the Atma and whatever attempt an Atma does or a, a soul does to approach Krishna, might it be in an inimical way or in, an, in a friendshiply devoted way, he appreciates both, both endeavors. Of course for the soul it is not just advised but strongly recommended to rather choose the path of, um, of devotion, as also Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu explains that. Devotion means um, favorable service toward Krishna. Um, Shiranam Bhakti Uttama, like the supreme um, mode of worship, is the mode of worship, um, it says Anushilanam, the, the word like, uh, but it's the shloka is known, uh, like where because for me defines the, what is what is pure devotional service. It is anyapila shita shunyam jnana karma anavritam anukulyena krishna nushiranam bhakti uttama. Yes, this anukulyena I think is the word like with um, with an intention to please. Mm. As, though Krishna is also can be satisfied with uh, those who blaspheme him because. King Vena, for example, is one of these personalities in this chapter. He's not mentioned, but before, like he is the father here of, of King Pritu. Interestingly, is also how he became father, because this was mentioned here again in the first verse that King Pritu was born from the dead body of King Vena by like the Brahmins churning um, his arms. Um, in the discussion of um, Narada Muni and Maharaj Yudhishthir in the seventh canto, King Vena is mentioned as an example. Because um, Narada Muni says that King Vena is very unfortunate. More fortunate are those who hate Krishna because they think of Krishna, although in a not uh, favorable way. But King Vena was, is described as being not at all concerned with, with Krishna in that sense. So he was devoid of any Krishna consciousness. And as I said, because it is said because therefore he went straight to hell. No, not of course, ultimately we can understand with King Pritu being the son of King Vena, he will deliver ultimately King, King Vena, but simply by his own merit, so to say, uh, King Vena did not attain any auspicious position on the contrary. So Krishna is um, neutral. He has always the interest um, of the living entity at heart. And this is some very important qualification for a king. A king could be, we could use it as simply as leader nowadays because we could dream of kings maybe coming one day and like it will not happen. We will have democracy, <laughs> we will have leaders. So, And 
also we we ourselves to some whatever extent we are also leaders in our life um, we say we lead our own lives for example you know everyone leads his own life so you have a lead in regards to making choices like directing your life like uh, might it be a career your spiritual life your family life in family life or like in relationships you then also have a leading role let's say if you're mother or, f or father uh, and so on then you also are responsible to guide children or like partner whatever the role uh, roles are how the roles are being um, put or in a society maybe you in a firm or a company you have leadership position um, or in a temple you're a temple management and uh, might be a head putrari might be a temple president and whatever so there's always the role of you being required to make choices to lead to to administer or no administrate administer something else administrate the uh, department maybe for example that you work in so that always the question is like how how um, fair or just can you be because neutrality is one aspect of justice you know we have this famous uh, uh, stature like I don't know in which where this post like this justitia um, she's probably everywhere I guess in front of uh, um, buildings um, on the courts like and she's blind here's a blindfold and she holds the scale so p make giving the message okay I don't look at externals you know I'm, I'm neutral I'm blind so to speak to the difference that might be colorblind in terms of races that might be gender blind that might be whatever so sa saying practically we focus really on on essentially the truth and that's something was also quality of a brahmana being truthful so it also adds up in there being neutral being truthful in order to be able to be just so in king pritu is um, described here as having uh, all these all these qualities um, because injustice is something that people struggle the most from um, particularly nowadays uh, we, we wouldn't even know where to start <laughs> at listing what kind of injustices people experience might it be minorities in, in, in a given society that feel treated uh, unjustly or uh, nations that feel co compared to other nations being treated unjustly as now on a political level then there might be personal injustice in your company someone else is being preferred over you though you would deserve the promotion based on your performance and whatever so there could there could be so many um, ways or in a temple you know like um, in regards to being appreciated for your service or commitment um, or like whatever happens you know or like you you lose someone that you feel I was not ready to lose this person and I feel it's unjust so in so many ways we can feel hurt. Um, in German you have this word uh, Kränkung, but if I, as far as I saw, uh, googling, googling it or like trying to in a dictionary, humiliation comes there, and I think it's not exactly what what it would mean. It goes in this direction, but it's like a form of hurt that like very um, where your sense of self or like your integrity or your ego suffers from. You would you probably say you feel offended in English that you feel some wrongdoing has been done to you um, and this is also what gives people um, a strong reason not to have faith in God because they're not convinced of his um, justice and we talk about karma and like we we, we ourselves might um, find ourselves in situations where we see oh, yeah, I know about the principle of karma partially I'm conscious of it at the same time um, I don't have full faith in it if I would have full faith that karma is just, I would not experience the feeling of injustice. Because if I'm really truly convinced that like in K Krishna arranges everything perfectly and whatever happens um, ha has is justified, this interesting word, um, like the, the, um, the law or the truth uh, is on the side of what happens. Even if it's technically in, the, in, 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 in juristic terms an injustice also injustice can be justice because it's karmically justified so there's a different perspective we have the law that is like 
or, or the ethics and morals like that count in a society and people might um, violate rules and laws and break laws. But then there's the, the superior law, the metaphysical law of karma, which is ne not necessarily visible in its workings. So on a, in, in the mundane platform, things may appear just an interest. Um, at the same time, this is not the absolute perspective taken or that has been taken by the Srimad Bhagavatam and so on. Um, because afterwards, when you die, um, you will be also informed about why things happen to you. So, but of course, who wants to wait till <laughs> she dies in order to get the clarity? Why did this happen to me? There was this example also um, from of this one Rishi or Muni who punished, being punished by Yamaraj. Um, in a cruel way, he was being with a lance, I guess. He was killed uh, by, by a king for, I don't know, for minor offense, I guess. And later he complained to Yamaraj and even uh, uh, cursed him then. Um, why did I have to suffer? I was, I was very pious. I performed so many yakyas and spiritual activities. And the explanation was, yeah, when you were a child, you tortured an ant. Uh, so this is the reaction. Um, so he was not satisfied with that exp explanation. Obviously, He felt it's out of proportion. And then there's different considerations about um, how, how, uh, how to say, how able of guilt is a child, for example, there are different there are distinctions, how mature is a person, how, how conscious, also in, 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 in um, oh my God, in English sometimes it's difficult. If, if, if you look in terms of um, law and, and guilt and crime, it's always one, one deciding factor is how guilty is a person and to determine the guilt of a person is a big part of it. That means how willingly, how consciously, how vicious or not vicious has a person acted. So the motivation behind is important. You can do something which appears externally cruel, but still you can be a bit, in, in, in a moral sense, lesser guilty than another person performing the same thing because your drive or motivation or the way you did it um, might differ. So this is not visible to us. We cannot see exactly the person's deepest motivation. And that makes it difficult for a human being to be truly just to another human being. Because what we can see, what we can understand of what's, happen, what's happening um, is just limited to us. So we can try to, we can endeavor to be really neutral and also truthful and try to find the truth. There are, of course, ways to, to um, encourage, inspire or also demand honesty, for example. Yeah. Um, at the same time, it's always a big challenge to, to do justice to someone, cons considering all the aspects and facets and having a sense of the person. Mm. Um, because the activity or deed in itself, this is also established by Immanuel Kant in his moral philosophy, the categorical imperative, where he researches and argues Okay, what could be an objective standard for what is morally good and bad or right or wrong? And he comes up with a principle, like with, the, with the, how to say, a certain scale, which is the, the so-called categorical imperative. Categorical means kind of absolutely valid, and imperative is like, a, like an order form. You, you should, like, like in the Bible, you have also comparatives, the commandments that would be an, uh, an imperative that would be that. So he says, act only according to that maxim of which you could wish that it becomes general law. So he points out, like, check first of all, what is the, what is the principle on which you act? That might be a simple thing. Okay, whenever I don't have money, I will just use public transport, so to say, as a illegally. I just, how, how, how does he say this in English also? Driving, you know, black driving is not easy. In English, in Germany, say Schwarzfahren means. Huh? Yes, how you say this in English? Is there a particular term? Okay. I don't know if this term is still um, politically correct if you say in German Schwarzfahren because black is like an. has some uh, indications. However, uh, so if this would be my rule, my principle, I must think of, can I think that um, free of 
um, contradiction and want that free of contradiction. That that is what Kant says. And if you think it true, you could not really want it because it would make the whole uh, public transport in itself impossible. If there would be a law, whenever I don't feel like paying or don't have money, I still use public transport, don't pay for it. So public transport would be bankrupt. There would be no public transport. So that would be, so to say, it wouldn't wouldn't hold up to a moral principle. For example, this is a small thing. So he argues on that level, and but he also says someone can act very rightfully. Um, let's say the the business owner who makes fair prices and so on, and we would assume, oh, this is a kind of honest, sincere person, and he doesn't cheat or like doesn't overprice and so on. But Kant argues that doesn't necessarily make him, I'll say, morally integer or like because he could just act simply out of utility. He says, if I'm honest and don't overprice, I have more customers, it will be better for my business. Right? So the motivation is not, oh, I love truth or simply I act out of the motivation doing the right thing, which is sattva in, in, in the Bhagavad Gita we find. The, the actions or in sattva guna or like what the mode of sattva is uh, characterized by a person acting or like performing duties because they ought to be done they have a sense of um, necessity without personal benefit so it will be sattva saying I do it because this is how Krishna wants it so to say or like this is a natural given duty and it is in itself it is good if I simply do that, despite any results or benefits or advantages, disadvantages. Whereas the mode in the mode of passion one says, I do that because I can get something out of it. Or what motivates me is a benefit that comes with it. And tamas means we don't even get what's going on and we, <laughs> we completely confuse things and do irreligious things and think it's religious and so on. So Therefore, it's very important, like that. Also, sincerity is there. You know, we have neutrality, we have truthfulness, honesty, sincerity. All these qualities come into that when a person can be just, um, being detached from any personal wants or needs or um, yeah bias, um, because then only this this supreme or like this uh, sublime qualities can manifest within a person. Therefore, spiritual life is a lot about character training. And then we say we want to cultivate sattva guna and we, with, all, with so many ethical codes or ways of behaving, how to um, be in relationships with, with guru, with, with teachers, with parents, with friends, with children and so on. All has this aspect that one is supposed to manifest certain qualities that are deemed um, sattvic and sat means comes from truth or that which has existence or potency asat is that what is, is temporary has no existence and is rather destructive um, so King Pritu um, coming from the transcendental platform is coming from pure sattva uh, sattva guna is also the seeing things as they are and seeing through all kinds of illusions also free from this dece uh, deception he says he could um, see all the internal and external activities of every one of his citizens still when no one will be able to know his system of espionage <laughs> so King Pritu um, as being practically a, a Vishnu avatar a, a Shakti Avesha avatar had this ability, um, which is also mentioned here, we have, we find in the 11th canto, all the yoga cities, the mystic perfections are mentioned, that there are eight primary yoga cities, which come from Vishnu himself, which only the devotees can attain to to full extent. And then there are 10 secondary cities that manifest from the mode of goodness. That is, for example, also freedom from hunger and thirst and so on, or like being able to give up your body when you wish, like we saw from Bhishma Dev. But we have also a city, um, it said completely executing one's determination. That means you can rule or control others. And I said King Pritu is like, maybe it came already or it might come in the further descriptions, 
is that his um, orders could not be refused because it was so powerful his like it, it, it had to manifest like his mystic ability completely executing his determination so that was a, literally a ruler in a sense he was completely in charge Jai Jagna Baladev Subhachari Ki Jai and if you might want to come uh, like transfer that to a living entity a living entity can also attain certain qualities like that but the requirement is um, being established in the mode of goodness in order to attain that it requires self-control purification of course the, the desire for being um, one's, oneself the lord it's a dangerous thing because yog yogis who attain that are sometimes put in the category of demons. <laughs> Why? Because they are tempted by the uh, idea, I'm the Supreme Lord and I can rule and I can, I can now uh, rule material nature, I can rule other people and I might think of myself, but I'm a very righteous person. I'm acting for the benefit and good of others, but par part of me might be simply enjoying being the Lord, practically the Isha. So it's very dangerous. But a person, a, a devotee, also uh, manifesting more and more sattvic qualities. Sri Prabhupada said purity is the force. So the more pure one is, also one's preaching, one's words, one's instructions, one's guidance will be powerful to others. Mm, because it will, it, it has power based maybe from realization or from internal purity that you consciously, sincerely, truthfully speak words that have substance. And that will and it will resonate with others in their hearts. You can um, see that when you whatever when you listen to different people or speakers, you will seek those who touch your heart. You give you inspiration. Who, who whose words give make you able to act. You know. And so this is also here, King Pritru, like in terms of ruling, <laughs> um, he he was simply um, giving the orders and everyone was following not because they were afraid of death or like it was, it was not a tyrant but it was a shakti of truth of the absolute truth was speaking practically this is how it to be done and like in the rest and they tuned into that mm. and also he can be completely just because he he sees everything he could perfectly know also the motivations that we said before a human being cannot see the motivation of another um, human being perfectly to some degree maybe the more subtle you get the more pure you get yourself you will be able to detect but it depends on how how how, how much am i aware of my motivations how, how much do i work on my purification and become conscious of my mind because this projection works the more i'm deluded myself um, I cannot m mirror or see like others' um, motivations because I'm, I'm myself not clear. My my inner mirror is like covered. You know? um, but the more I see things as they are, the more I am in truth. The more I can be just because I know the truth. Uh, also, in injustice in the system, what what is it all about? You swear, like in America, because yeah, movies also. I don't know, is this done being also done in and they think they swear only on different books, isn't it? In America it's the Bible where they swear to say the truth and nothing but the truth. So uh, ask God Oh my god. So help me God <laughs> like this and and it might be then some swear on the Quran and, and whatever, you know. But the point is always like it's it's essential for justice that there's truth. You cannot have justice without truth, you know, which requires again honesty and sincerity and purity and so on. And for example, Yamaraj is also um, able to be perfectly just because he is a pure devotee of Krishna. It is explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam that he, being such an empowered soul, he has a direct connection to the Paramatma. So when a soul comes in front of him, um, after leaving a body and um, receiving his or its results, um, the super soul actually shows Yamaraj what has this person done, not done, 
out of what reason. So he can access, he, he gets access by the supreme consciousness, so to say, to what's, what was happening. So the perfect witness <laughs> is there, the super soul. And therefore he can um, um, exercise perfect judgment because he's connected with the super soul who sees everything. Mm. And he says also he is then free from envy. That's another thing we recently discussed um, also in, since I work in psychiatry and work with people differently challenged in, in, in mental ways. And one of the diagnoses which is very prominent and not just in, in Europe, in all over the world is depression. Depression can have different reasons. It can have different symptoms. There's a range of possibilities, but essentially also underneath a depression might simply be a strong, um, as we said before, kränkung, like a um, sense of being offended, being treated unjust or unjust. It might be a loss, that might be a treatment that was, or male treatment. And, um, and p people also, when they have that, when they, f when they feel like that, they tend to be like this with others. Um, it's a simple principle, I hurt others because I'm hurt myself. Not because I'm evil, it's just it's just a um, dynamic of the mind. That like you see this also in animals, you know. Of course human beings are more than animals that can rise above that, but still there is part of us, let's say if an animal is hurt, let's say a dog, and he feels threatened, like, or like because of his own hurt, his vulnerability, sense of vulnerability is stronger, his sense of, sense of danger is stronger, and he might attack as a defense, you know, because he thinks he has to protect himself. And so also people might do that, you know. But underneath is they're not necessarily that they're evil or aggressive, but they might simply be hurt. And they might hurt from a sense of injustice. Um, and so that makes it not possible for them to be also very... Um, neutral or free from, uh, from, from envy as here King Pritu is. If the son of his enemy is not punishable, he will not punish him. But if his own son is punishable, he will immediately punish him. It is said. Um, because envy is also such a quality that, that makes it not possible to be just. Um, um, again, the word I have to find an English word. You say in German, um, wohlwollend. That means being well wishing of others. That would be a contrary thing to envy that your motivation is what the outcome shall be um, supporting the good it shall be beneficial similarly as we have the um, austerities of speech um, described in the Bhagavad Gita Anutvega Charambakyam Satyam Priyar Hitam Chayat Svadhyaya Pyasanam Chayva Vanmayam Tapa um, like the austerities of speech also consists truthfulness, satyam, priyam, pleasing, hitam, beneficial. So also here, like um, and this cannot happen if one is envious. And then Anudvega is the first one that um, should not be agitating the speech. Um, and should not. Um, and Svadhyaya Pyasanam Cheva, that also reciting Vedic literature, this is uh, austerity of speech. Um, so if, if these things are there, if, if, if they assemble all more and more together, then a, a person actually is already um, acting almost like being on transcendence. Because one, my understanding is one essential feature of transcendence in, in contrast to material duality is, um, is detachment simply. Transcendence means I'm unbiased, I'm not, I'm not affected by material duality and therefore also I don't see friends and enemies in that sense. I see different living entities with different conditions and respond to them equally in terms of being equally well wishing to both. That might require though another uh, way of behavior or words to different people but my essential uh, attitude is everyone is um, eternal part of Krishna differently covered, differently conditioned. So now I always have to consider two things. Um, 
okay ex first one is that that everyone is like the soul but i have to treat differently according to the con uh, the condition but if my attitude is i'm i tr i want to be a well wisher like a well meaning friend and then i can also deal with both if i'm if i'm not if i don't if i train my mind in such a way to be not be too much affected by how people are it's difficult <laughs> i also experience it every day uh, my mind gets annoyed very quickly and, and sometimes i think yeah but it's kind of it's, uh, it's hopeless <laughs> my mind is so uh, judgy and annoyed and like has like really this friend enemy thinking or like like dislike but then what i notice is what what is possible in the mind it's not necessarily possible to to um, get rid of this first impulse of judgment but what can be done is to put this judgment aside say okay okay now my mind is judging but then aside and and i try to approach the person neutrally because sometimes the idea might be because there is a sense of judgment in me so therefore i cannot or therefore i'm bad already or i'm, I'm not a good devotee or um but my approach is like okay we can suspend the judgment for a while and see and then also then also check was i right with that did a person confirm that by getting this per getting getting to know this person closer by trying to help or support and that might change our judgment might completely disappear as well because the mind we also must see where do we come from do we judge because out of being whatever evil or envious or like are we protective of ourselves or maybe sensitive in regards of dangers or threat you know and therefore judge so there can be so many different motivations behind that yes krishna is therefore trustworthy because all this mentioned and qualities um speak for him and we like explored a bit like the um aspects of justice and like beginning with neutrality um, so yes one of our tasks is i guess to to always remember that krishna's workings the karmic workings are based on on sincere well-wishing and neutral eyes of krishna and um, full absolutely uh, absolute awareness he sees everything he has all aspects in mind therefore he can be the perfect judge we only see limited aspects of a situation of our life and so on Hare Krishna so I would open up for comments questions critiques judgments <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's a mental practice um, it, it, in my experience it works like this I notice and I see my judgment is coming up but I make it a principle like a maxim so to say okay first of all before I listen to that I in, engage in let's say respectful communication give, give some space to get to know the other person so if I make that a principle or like decide in myself, my principle is at least I want to have two, three experiences with a person in order to either confirm or disconfirm my judgment about the person. So and, and, and doing this is exactly suspending my judgment. I know it's there and I have it in mind. We can also, judgment can be also not, not necessarily, or no, it's not necessarily only moral judging someone's value or not value it can be also an, an estimation what kind of what type of person is there in front of me um, yes giving space to know the person and like um, confirm my judgment or, or disconfirm by engaging in either conversation or association and 
like this or yeah or it could also be that um, that we use a communication style that allows for um, a rather distinguished uh, form um, like we talk sometimes of feedback you know we can say um, it appears to me that it is like this or I have the feeling that by saying okay there's an impression in my mind but I don't give it absolute validity I'm just saying something is there um, and then and, and maybe also communicate that you know for example it seems when you have a person you think this person does not like you or like is a very um, unfriendly fellow you know to say okay I, I notice often maybe you don't uh, you don't greet and uh, uh, greet someone you know when you come or like uh, you don't respond to um, to messages messages and, and whatever and I wonder what's happening here you know so I kind of become neutral in the sense first of checking out what's going on you know before I con confirm or not confirm my judgment about the person is that uh, answering your question Definitely. Obviously, the British government was very satisfied with this with this job, so that they built the extra <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, train tracks for him. Mm -hmm. So, Prabhupada mentions somewhere, I believe, that in, in Kali Yuga you cannot get judgment unless you are given faith from the Sri Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Expressing my thoughts that came up during the class, and uh, another thing is that sometimes I find difficulty then in finding out my own motivation in certain situations. In other words, my motivation is like somehow so hidden. Mm -hmm. And I should have some thought in this regard. If not, yeah. Uh, and since we so we already d uh, talked about that, what um, what I find. What gave me what gave me some interesting experiences or valuable experiences is starting to write poetry. Um, poetry has different facets, or simply starting to write. Writing always means reflection, exploring also what's going on in your mind, kind of filter it and bring it to a point. So and and, and you might also engage with yourself in this kind of dialogue by writing and exploring what's going on in your mind. And then always keep a sense of awareness, like, okay, when some emotions come up or some thoughts or some impressions, to not push them away, because that's what's happening. We, we are used to also, we say that we call it defense mechanisms also in, in, in psychology. The mind has mechanisms that protect the self from, for example, also unpleasant realities. You know, I might, I might know I'm actually, let's say, Let's say I'm an angry person deep inside. I have a lot of anger. But I don't at any cost want to appear as having that anger because I want to be uh, peaceful, like um, very balanced and neutral Brahmana, for example. So what do I do with this anger? I always have to kind of stay away. Or like I might be afraid of it even. What if it comes out? I don't know how it will come out and what it will do. So like what my mind can do is have a defense mechanism of some form of repression and whatever. So when it's out of my um, reach, my consciousness. And then I wonder, ah, something is there in me. I don't know what. And, and, and there will be some subtle irritation in the mind. But what if I allow that to come up and give it a word or words, describe it, or other might, others might paint it, give it a shape. Others might express it in music, whatever they do. So simply try to give, uh, give it a voice. They say sometimes, you know, um, and try to then because my experience is poetry. If if you really get 
to the essence of what's going on for you, you can mirror yourself in it. It's always about that, like you find yourself in the words, in your words that you find for yourself. And I would just encourage people. Uh, next year, I might start also doing some, uh, maybe developing a course for that or so. But, uh, I find it very fascinating how through wi writing, one can get access also. All right. thing com that comes to my mind is that um, also for example Yudhishthir and, and Bhishma both were regarded as highly learned um, realized souls highly religious highly respectable conversant with all kinds of Shastra at the same time both of them in some occasions declared that it is very difficult to actually ascertain or like to recognize in a given circumstance what is now exactly the right thing to do it's it's so some, it's so complex so so many factors are there that sometimes it seems impossible as if we could only approach the truth or like the right thing only to a certain extent but uh, and what comes to my mind is that krishna says every endeavor in this world is covered by fault as fire is covered by smoke and it's an absolute statement every endeavor he says even those of those who are very learned so even Yudhishthir like I mean this is also a caliber we can of person of brown we can dream of or Bhishma mm -hmm. and still they made mistakes but being based they, they're like based their lives on uh, like this high, most high uh, ethical codes and uh, or like morality Shastra and being very pure in their, in their way of living and yeah there's no f the only faultless world is the uh, the spiritual world <laughs> and i guess krishna designed it like this that this uh, despite all endeavors um to do the ideal thing uh, it will not happen you know so that we do not um maintain um 
all this hope that this world can be an ideal place mm, it comes to my mind Just one another quick question. So when you see that um, we know that pride is being in pain, but then if you go back to this lineage, it's such a black lineage, and then you're also picking on us. So when it says that how once you become a gen uh, devoted generations before and after you, mm -hmm. it's quite a. But then it's also mentioned that his mother had made some offense because of which Vena stood work in, 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 in such a demonic with such a demoniac nature. Then I'm thinking that some, then these examples come up because in Bhagavatam, these examples also explain to us a lot of philosophy and literature and nuances. So when this happens, then I'm just thinking that does it mean that despite the fact that you may be born in such a lineage and you may have Brahma as your grandfather, Guru Maharaj as an elevated deity, and also Prithvi as an elevated son, Still, there is this cause of um, a demoniac nature just because of the offense of the mother, which she may have made in her life. And that's the. So I'm just trying to balance which yeah. is more significant. Um, okay. I mean, um, the Bhagavatam actually explains um, the mother is also, I think, called, was it also Suniti, was also her name, or Sunita? And, and uh, Sunita. Uh, being the daughter of death personified i don't recall exactly maybe there are different stories different versions that speak of an offense um for my my remember uh, my memory of the fourth canto is like that um king venus father or what was his name again Maharaj anga he married her and he was uh, actually his mistake was as described he was so liberal um that he kind of lost judgment and not considering the actually disqualification of his wife to be a, a mother to a kingly child because by her nature she was the son of death and death is identical with irreligion mm -hmm. and the father and the mother um, or like the son adopts more the nature of the mother so actually it was king anga's fault <laughs> to uh, in that sense to have a child with her not not being aware that actually that the likeliness was overwhelmingly high that he will get it as a child that will not be according to his wish because his the, the mother couldn't help it <laughs> she was just who she was you know the son uh, the daughter of uh, death personified of irreligion personified i personally would be interested to hear the story how it came to happen that he married her and why <laughs> you know yeah. and later the brahman says that we the good semen, the good uh, line is still there, but we have to just um, purify it from the bad influence of you know, from this from this in inheritance. So it was still there, but it became um, how to say latent, latent. You said in English, latent means like as underlying. It's not actively, but it's just it's there, but underneath, kind of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, the last. Comment question. Thank you for the class. Um, I have a question um, about uh, the Kaaba. He is uh, the the sacra um, of um, the offended or etc. By uh, the two fathers who had Kaaba, and um, I I mean devotee. Uh, also have karma or yeah I, I would like to, to know uh, deeper if it's possible in the time mm. uh, what exactly is karma and yeah I, I hear like yeah you are free of karma if you carry out the Krishna and yeah karma is being created as long as long as a jiva is being influenced by the modes of nature karma free is only a person who is not anymore governed by the modes of nature or by selfish interest um, it is said like vanashram dharm for example as a principle um, is valid only for those who are affected by the modes of nature if someone really rose above 
he doesn't have to perform duties anymore but he's, it's also not a sin because that person has learned to be completely detached from the material identity as long as we have an affection and desires and wants and needs in regards to this body so then we naturally we have to act kind of selfish or like self-centered and this we create karma we might be in devotional service on a mixed platform or like so it would be uh, a dangerous misunderstanding that that since we practice some Krishna consciousness and receive initiation that there's no karma for us anymore that's very dangerous mm -hmm. <laughs> um, this, this it is not an um, how to say being free of karma is, is a state of existence that means that a person really could leave behind all material identifications and even then like it said like you could imagine like a ventilator like you pull out the plug it still rotates a bit till it stops so even if you got rid of your material consciousness still there might be some stuff coming until it's um, and it's also brown buddha prasana atma na so chudi prasana atma means that the jiva is liberated from the influence of the modes of nature so I guess that we should t have in mind, okay, am I still affected by the modes of nature? And if my answer is yes, then I also can, um, how to say, can be very sure I'm still creating karma, processing karma. Is that? Grantachinu Bhagavatam Gijai, Shri Prabhupada Gijai.